بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to grant us all the sincere intentions Allah revealed in the Quran وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بَنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Allah revealed that Isa alayhi salam said when he received revelation, he went to Bani Israel and he said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min at-tawrah. He said that I am here and I am here to confirm that the Tawrah that you were given that was revealed to Musa and Harun alayhim as I'm confirming that this is the truth. And I have not been sent to reject the Torah, rather the Torah is true. I've come to confirm it. And I've come to give you the good news. So to confirm the Torah, and I've come to give you the good news of a messenger. That will come after me. Jesus Prophet uh, Jesus alayhi salam, he said, a prophet will come after me, a messenger. I have come to give you the good news about him. And that is that a messenger known as Ahmad, i.e. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will come after me. Our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has two names, Muhammad and Ahmad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like this, there are other prophets that have two names. Ya'qub and Israel. Likewise, Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam and Al-Masih. So these are prophets that have two names. So Prophet Jesus, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, he mentioned to Bani Israel that I am someone who has come to give you this good news of a prophet who is going to come after me and his name is Ahmed, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And before this also, the Torah that was revealed to Musa alayhi salam also contained the good news of the prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then as we mentioned last time, he performed miracles. Jesus alayhi salam. Allah revealed فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُّبِينٌ When he performed miracles, many of them said هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُّبِينٌ Many of the Jews, they said, this is mere magic. This is sorcery. He's doing magic. Those that followed Prophet Isa alayhi salam in those three years when he had revelation. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. This is what we say, right? Those people, they used to say, La ilaha illallah Isa Rasulullah. He was the messenger of the time. Those that followed him, they were upon Al-Islam. And they supported him. They spread his message. Whether it was in Jerusalem or Al-Nasirah, Nazareth or the surrounding areas. Allah revealed what Isa alayhi salam said to them. They were his companions. 
قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله He asked them Are you my supporters? Are you my companions? Are you the ones that will spread the religion of Islam that has been given to me? قالوا نحن أنصار الله They said we are your supporters O Messenger of Allah Just like the, the, just like the Sahaba supported Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, his companions supported him. Allah revealed, فَآمَنَتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَكَفَرَتْ طَائِفَةٌ Groups among them embraced Al-Islam. Groups amongst them believed in Isa alayhi salam and others committed kufr. Allah revealed, فَلَمَّا أَحَسَّ عِيسَى مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ قَالَ مَنْ أَنْصَارِي إِلَى اللَّهِ That when the time came close for Isa alayhi salam to ascend, this was revealed to him. Again, he asked them, who are my supporters? Who will follow this religion? Who will carry the baton as it were? They said, Allah revealed, قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَاشْهَدِ بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ They said that we believe in Allah. And bear witness, O Isa, Ya Rasulullah, bear witness that we are Muslims. Most of the people that Isa alayhi salam was sent to did not accept his message. The few of them that did believe in him, they were upon al-Islam. He had companions known as al-Hawariyun. The Jews who were, remember, living in that area were living under the Roman rule. The Romans they were not Jews. At this time, they still worshipped their so-called gods. In our previous session, we reviewed what happened to Isa alayhi salam. It was revealed to him that some people are coming to kill him. So he said to his companions, there were 12 of them. He told them by revelation. He was informed. He told them, some of you after me will leave Islam. Some of you will become non-Muslims. He said, so I ask you now, I'm giving you an opportunity. Who among you is going to be my supporter? Who among you is going to be the one that takes my place? is going to be killed and then will take and, and then will be my companion in Al Jannah. So the youngest among the companions got up and said, Me. And Isa alayhi salam told him to sit down. And twice more Isa alayhi salam asked him uh, or asked them. And this youngest one got up. So then Isa alayhi salam said to him, you are the one. When this happened, they were in a room which had a large, which had a high ceiling like this, a very, very high ceiling. In the corner, there was like a window. If people wanted to in that building, if they wanted to go to the roof, to the top, they would get a ladder and they would go through that window and get to the roof. Prophet Isa alayhi salam, as was mentioned by Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam in a sahih hadith. He ascended like this. He had mentioned to his companions that the one that I choose or the one that takes my place, he will be made to look like me. So when that happened, when this extraordinary miracle occurred for Isa alayhi salam, those companions of his that remained, that youngest one, 
he took the form, his face, his facial features, he was made to look like Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. The people came, whether it was the Jews or some of the Roman soldiers who were patrolling the area, that were told where Prophet Isa was, alayhi salam, they took him. And then you see what, uh, then you see the Christian narrative play out. They took him from one governor to the other governor, this person, they humiliated him, they took him uh, from city to city, from Roman ruler to ruler, until they crucified this person. We said last time there are other stories as well, but these are not confirmed from the hadiths. These ones are not confirmed. Like they say that the one that was a traitor and the one that gave away the, the place of Isa alayhi uh, salam, this Jewish man, that his, uh, he was the one whose face changed. Some said other things. Some said that one of the companions of Isa alayhi salam, he became a non-Muslim, he became an apostate. And this is the one whose face changed. So there are different narrations, but the one that is confirmed from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one that we mentioned. Allah revealed in the Quran about this. وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بِنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And the Jews say, we killed Jesus. Allah revealed. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Allah revealed, مَا قَتَلُوهُ They did not kill him. وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ And they did not crucify him. They did not put him on a cross. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But it was made to look like that. So, there's something that needs to be explained here. There's something called mass witness transmission. The Muslim scholars, they used this explanation to show that even the crucifixion itself is in question. Even the crucifixion itself. We know it wasn't Isa alayhi salam. But even that itself is in question. What is mass witness transmission? In the past, when there were no phones, and so on. How did people know about certain events that occurred? For example, how did people know that Lady Maryam, Lady Mary, alayhi salam, she had a, she, she gave birth to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. How did they know that Prophet Isa alayhi salam, rather, uh, spoke when he was about 40 days old? How did they know that? Because there were so many people in the beginning that saw that, that heard that. This was the first level. Then the second level is that they told, that large number of people, told another large number of people. And then at every level, a large number of people tells a large number of people. This is called mass witness transmission. And let's say even a hundred levels down, as long as it starts with a large number of people, and moves at every level to a large number of people, let's say like 30 or 40 people, or more. Then, even at the 100th level, like us for example, we would know with 100% certainty that it happened. We wouldn't doubt. So when it comes to this event, which is the crucifixion, it said that the Romans at the time, they did not allow for people to get close, because they had many people who would claim to be prophets, uh, some people who wanted to overthrow the uh, Roman government, so they would crucify people day and night. Some of, uh, some of the narrations say that they would write on the top, on a plank of wood, they would write the crime that this person had committed. So some claimed that for this person that was crucified, they wrote, King of the Jews that he claimed to be the king of the Jews, contending the Roman rule. Anyway, so it said that only four people, the Romans only allowed four people, or five, some said six, to view what was happening. And even then, this so-called crucifixion was happening from far away. And these, they said, were four women. 
One of them was Mary of Magdalene, Maryam al Majdaliya. And she, you will learn, is not somebody who is trustworthy. She was somebody who even the Christians say was possessed by seven demons. They said, Sab'atun min ash shayateen. She was possessed by seven demons. She is the one that said that we saw this person crucified and he looked like Jesus. She also then later on said, as the Christians say, this is the Christian narrative, we know Isa alayhi salam was raised. The Christians, Christians then say that three days after this crucifixion and burial in a cave, three days and three nights later, Jesus was resurrected. He came back to life. And the only person to see him, supposedly, in the flesh was Maryam al Majdaliya. This Mary. This is not his mother, of course. Maryam bintu Imran, alayhi salam. No. This woman who was, some of them might have accused her of being insane. Some of, and, and many people, they said that she was possessed, not to the extent of one shaitan being in her, but seven. She said that, yes, I saw Jesus raised from the dead. She said, I saw him crucified. I saw him raised from the dead. And then I saw him rising into the heavens. So, according to the Quran and the hadiths of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, we know that he was raised, and that's it. And he is in the sky until we talk about his return soon. In the Christian narrative, they say, no, he was crucified, he was killed uh, for the sins of man, uh, and then that he came back after three days and three nights. Who saw him? Maryam al Majdaliya, Mary of Magdalene. And then after that, he was raised to the sky to, well, Ayyadu Billah. You know what the Christians say? They say that God is this thing in the sky. We know Allah is not uh, in a place or bound by time. They say that uh, Jesus, he rose up to a place where this thing called God is sitting, and then Jesus sat on the right of this thing that they call God. So after the crucifixion of this person, who we say was a companion of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, there were differences of opinion at that time. So like the day after, or the week after. Some of them said, that, no, no, he can't have died because he was God. Some people said that at that time. Some people said, no, he was killed. He was put on the cross. Some people said, if that was Jesus, then where's our friend? You know, our, our friend who, who, who's always with us, where is he? Suddenly, they both disappeared at once. If that was Jesus, then where's our friend? But, and if that was our friend... Where's Jesus? So there was a lot of confusion. Some said, his face, the, the person that we crucified, his face was the face of Jesus. But his body was not the body of Jesus. So there was a lot of confusion between the people. We'll discuss about what happened after that in terms of the Muslims who believed in him, what they did. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala revealed Meaning that Allah raised Isa alayhi salam. This is in the Quran. Allah raised Isa alayhi salam to a special place. Some people, they look at this and they translate it in a wrong way. They say that Allah raised Isa to himself. Allah is not in the sky. That is one of the main points that we differ with the Christians about. They say that Allah is in the sky. They say God is in the sky. The Jews say God is in the sky. To, to, they, 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 they say that God is sitting on a throne. We've discussed this before. To say that something sits, you need an upper part and a lower part. Right? So it's insulting to say that Allah is in a place and so on. So this ayah means that Allah raised Isa alayhi salam to a special place, which is the sky. As many of the scholars mentioned, 
like Ar-Razi in his tafsir, and many others, they mention this matter. So even the crucifixion, now, where did it take place? Even that, the Christians, they differ about it. Some say it was, a, it, it was in such, uh, such and such place called the cavalry in Latin in Jerusalem, and that's where they built a church. And some say it was in another place. So even then it's not clear to them where it happened. So it wasn't like, like today. Like, for example, something happens and everybody knows about it. It was very unclear to people what was happening at the time. So, the true followers of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, the Muslims, they remained upon al-Islam for 200 years. 200 years. Yes, at the time there were those that said, he is the son of God. Or that God sacrificed his son for the sins of man. Or some said many things, many different things. The Muslims, they remained with the correct belief, of course, for 200 years. They were patient and they remained worshipping Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. They fled to the mountains. They fled to the faraway areas to save themselves. So, Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, if he was raised about 33 or 36 in the, in, the, in the common era. So you have BC, before Christ, and then you have CE, the common era afterwards. If he was raised at about 36, right? The Jews, they wanted to revolt against the Roman rule. So in the year 63 or 66, I forget, they revolted against the Romans. And for three or four years, then they were free until the Romans hit back. They sent an army of 300,000 Romans. And they ransacked Jerusalem. The Muslims exited Jerusalem. They went to the mountainous areas. And they remained teaching Al-Injil, the real Injil. The Injil, I just want to make a point. The Injil was given as a book, was given at once to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Not like the Qur'an. Isn't it that the Qur'an over 23 years was given to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam bit by bit, bit by bit. And later on, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, he gathered it and then other companions gathered it and Sayyiduna Uthman made copies, right? As for, um, as for At-Tawrah and Al-Injil, they were both given at once. They were revealed all at once. Allah revealed about the Muslims in the time of Isa alayhi salam. Allah revealed, وَجَعَلْنَا فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ رَأْفَةً وَرَحْمَةً وَرَحْبَانِيَّةً بَتَدَعُوهَا مَا كَتَبْنَاهَا عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَّا بِتِغَاءَ رِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ Allah revealed that these people Allah created within their hearts special blessings by which they secluded themselves. They went into faraway places. They built monasteries for themselves, places where they would worship, out of clay, simple clay houses. And they detached themselves from the world like monks do, but Islamically, these people, they were detached from the world, these Muslims, and they remained worshipping Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this was not something that was in the Injil. It was not something that they were ordered by Allah to do. And it wasn't something that Isa, alayhi salam, ordered them to do. They decided to do that. And they were praised for that in the Quran. Meanwhile, people started to change the meanings of the Injil. The original gospel, the original Bible. It remained as it was in the first few years, 
and then they started to change its meaning. So it was, it, it was as it was, but verbally they started to change the judgments. Then they began to delete parts of it, and then they began to add parts. You might say, why would they, who in their right mind would delete what Allah reveals, or add, or change? Politics can be said to play a big part in this. The Romans at the time, they didn't want uh, what they believed to be the up-and-coming king of the Jews to come and drive the Romans out of this territory that they were colonizing. And many other things like that. There were enemies of the Muslims at the time, or enemies of those people that said Jesus is the Son of God. So uh, divide and conquer, as you'll see. So they started, some people then started to write their own versions when they lost the original Injil, or they didn't lose it, they started to write, uh, spies and other people, they started to write their own versions. So you have the, the famous uh, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. So Mark, he, this, uh, this so-called gospel that's attributed to Mark, Okay, it's supposed to be the original Bible, but according to him. But even now, Christians, they say that we know that he didn't write it. Someone anonymous wrote it. Likewise, Matthew, Luke, and John. Uh, when did they write these? For example, Matthew wrote this, uh, uh, or, or it was attributed to him, between 66 and 70 in the common era. So what? About 30 years after Isa, alayhi salam, has gone. 30 years. Like, I know we procrastinate, right? I know you say, I've got to do something. <laughs> and then, then you say, yeah, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Sometimes a few months can pass, but 30 years! 30 years pass, and then somebody decided, yeah, I think, you know what, I'm going to write what was revealed by Allah. And then in that they write, Jesus was the Son of God, and then this and that. And then, so, one of them wrote it, somebody anonymous even, Then it was randomly attributed to this guy called Matthew. And then Luke, also, uh, in the common era, about 85 to 90. So about 60 years after Isa alayhi salam has been raised. And then John from 90 to about 110. Anyway, these are the, these are the four, what they call the canonical corpuses, the, the, four, the, the four gospels supposedly. They're all supposed to represent the actual one book which is the Injil and they have differences in them. Anyway. So, these, are, these were not the only ones at the time. We, we have one Qur'an. Allah revealed that the Qur'an has been revealed and Allah will protect it. And we have the same Qur'an that existed about 1,400 years ago in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The companions preserved it. When they wanted to write it down, they didn't write it down unless somebody among the companions said, yes, I heard it from the Messenger of Allah. And then they would say to him, bring two witnesses who say that you heard it from the Messenger of Allah, who are with you. Every single verse in the Qur'an, it was documented like this. We talked about mass witness transmission. Every single verse in the Qur'an has been documented by way of mass witness transmission, like I mentioned before. And this system is an amazing system. Nobody memorized Al-Injil. Even the pious people, among the Muslims, nobody memorized the Injil. But the Qur'an that Allah has revealed, many Muslims have it memorized or have memorized parts of it. So these were not the only four versions. There was the so-called uh, Gospel of Barnabas. And like this, about 70 of them appeared. Saying different things. Some of them saying that Jesus did not die on the cross. And he was not crucified, but he was raised. So many different things were being said. So there were 17 number until, so if we're following the timeline, 325 in the common era, a Roman emperor called Constantine converted to Christianity. So he used to believe in all these so-called gods, uh, you know, of, 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 of the Romans. He converted to Christianity. And he looked at it and, you know, to summarize, he kind of said, what a mess. What's going on? 70 different versions. Which one was really revealed? You know what? So he gathered 
all of the top priests at the time, the top Christians at the time, and there were maybe 70 versions of this, of, of, of uh, 70 different versions, so called Bibles. So he locked them in a room in a council in Turkey. Uh, I don't know how it's pronounced N I C A E A, Nisai, sometimes they say. There, there are two councils like this. He locked them there for like a week. He said, You have to decide on which one is the real one. So they gave their opinion. There were fights, there were punch ups. They were quite literally, these things happened in that council. Then they decided on four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What did they do with the rest? They burned them. And they said, everybody now has to adhere to these. Then, in and, in and around this time, the first person to mention the so-called Trinity came along. 300 years after Isa, alayhi salam. So they started to say, well, you have to, if you want to be a Christian... You have to believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 300 years later. So they agreed on these four versions. The Quran is not like that. In the Quran, we have different recitations. Okay, you might say, uh, uh, for example, one recitation is, ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى. Right. Another recitation is ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى. تشقى تشقى. Same meaning. Okay. There are different recitations. Yes. But different versions. No. Allah revealed that the Quran would be protected, and the system that was put in place by the scholars, as Allah willed, is a fantastic system. So the Qur'an is protected. As for the real Injil, the nowadays it does not exist. The actual Injil. If you open up nowadays these different so-called Gospels, you'll see many differences in them. You'll see in the so-called Gospel of Matthew, it's written, and Matthew walked past Jesus. How is he going to be saying that about himself in the third person? There's many discrepancies. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's bizarre. Such that some people who used to be Christians are not Christians now because of how bizarre it is. Then, many years later, about from the time of Isa alayhi salam, about 500 years later, 570 years later, when the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had started to spread his message in Mecca. There were a group of people who were coming from the Yemen to Mecca. And they wanted to stop, like we'd stop at a service station, they stopped and they pitched up a tent. They wanted to rest. Most of the people, they fell asleep. One of them, who later became a companion of the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he heard a voice, but he did not see a person. It was a jinn. This jinn said verses of poetry in the Arabic language. This is only one example. This jinn said verses of poetry in the Arabic language, saying, if you reach the place of Zamzam and the place of Hijr Ismail, if you reach Mecca, then give our glad tidings, give our salutations to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who, will, who has appeared as a prophet and tell him that we are supporters, we will aid you. And tell him that this is what Prophet Jesus alayhi salam had ordered us to do. You know the jinn, they live sometimes for hundreds and hundreds of years. These were jinn that had heard from Prophet Isa alayhi salam that the last prophet will come. And when he comes, support him. So this, this person, when he got to Mecca, he looked for this person called Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until he found him and he told him of his story, he embraced Islam. He said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah 
wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah so the message continues the message of al-islam continues then approximately in the 10th year after hijrah now fast forwarding to when the prophet was 50 when, when the prophet was around 60 years of age or slightly more he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was approached in his masjid al masjid al nabawi by the Christians of the Arabian Peninsula, but specifically Bani Najran. Sixty of them came riding on animals. Fourteen of them were the leaders of the Christians at that time. Many of the tribes were coming to Prophet Muhammad والسلام, because they wanted to make peace with him. They wanted to uh, have agreements that they wouldn't fight them and they wouldn't fight them. Or the Prophet would... Uh, would be successful in getting them to embrace al Islam and so on. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, Alastum ta'alamuna annahu la yakunu waladun illa wa huwa yushbihu abah? Don't you know that there is no child except that he or she would resemble the parents? Isn't this the case? They said yes. So now he's addressing them in Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi. So he said, alayhi salatu wassalam, Don't you know that Allah is alive and will not die? And don't you know that Prophet Isa alayhi salam will die? And don't you know that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He has control over all of the creation? And He is the one that protects the creation? And He is the one that sustains, gives, gives to eat, gives health to the creation, and that Isa alayhi salam cannot do that. And don't you know that Allah knows absolutely everything in the skies and on the earth, and that Isa alayhi salam only knows what he has been given knowledge about, and so on. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam spoke to them at length. And this can be found in Surah Al-Imran. And then the example is given of Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala revealed, Inna mathala Isa inda Allahi ka mathali Adam khalaqahu min turabin thumma qala lahu kum fayakun that the example of Isa alayhi salam is like the example of Adam. Isa alayhi salam was born without father, but Adam alayhi salam was, yes, born without father and mother. So his situation is even more amazing. If one was to follow the so-called logic of the Christians that, oh, Isa didn't have a father, so his father must be God. Then, according to these, these twisted principles, wouldn't one of them, you'd think, say that, well, Adam alayhi salam is without father and without mother, so wouldn't he be supposedly more deserving of being supposedly the son of God? Well, ayyadu billah. This is an intellectual proof that the Quran used. Just some notes. Al-Injil was revealed on Laylatul Qadr, just as the Qur'an was revealed on Laylatul Qadr. It was revealed on the 18th of Ramadan. And it came to Isa alayhi salam in one go, not over a period of like 23 years as the Qur'an did. It was in the Syriac language, Syriac. And nobody memorized the Injil. Because Prophet Isa alayhi salam was raised and did not die, the scholars, in light of the hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and of the Quran, said that he would return. 
before the day of judgment. And his return is one of the major signs, one of the major ten signs of the closeness of the day of judgment. They commented about him, alayhi salam, right now. They said that he has been raised to the sky. The skies, the seven skies, they are not just what some people might imagine, clouds, just air, void, emptiness. No, they are solid bodies. When Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu was salam, ascended in Al-Mi'raj, there were guards at the doors of each sky. So the skies, they, they, uh, they are places that have doors and they can be entered into. The scholar said Prophet Isa alayhi salam is in the sky, in one of the skies. Some mention the second sky. They said that he lives like the angels do in that the angels do not eat, the angels do not drink. The angels pray the five obligatory prayers. They said Isa alayhi salam lives like the angels until he returns. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam said, Wallahi nafsi bi yadi. I swear by the one who controls my soul, meaning Allah, I swear by Allah. La yushikanna an yanzila fi kum ibn Maryam hakaman adla. He said, I swear by Allah. The time is close that Isa, the son of Maryam, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi salam. He is about to descend. He will descend. And he will be a just leader. Fayaksir al-salib. He will break the cross. He will destroy the cross. All of the Christians who are present at his time when he returns, they will believe in him before he dies. All of them. When he returns, he will clarify that he was not crucified on the cross, that he did not die. He will clarify that he is not what some claim him to be, a son of God. Neither is he that, nor is he God. He will clarify. Allah revealed in the Qur'an, that they will believe in him before he dies. They will believe in what is to be believed in him that is correct. So he will break the cross. الخنزير, and he will get rid of swine for good. Al khinzir. Pigs. There is a certain rule of uh, taking a certain amount of money from the Christians or from the Jews and al Majus in return for not fighting against them. The Muslim Khalifa takes care of that. This is called al Jizya. They, they pay a certain amount, and so the Khalifa, the, 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 the land becomes a Muslim land without engaging in war. And the Muslims would protect that land and those people, those Christians and Jews, in case an enemy was to attack. This is called al-jizya. But when Isa alayhi salam comes, there will be no jizya. This rule at that time does not apply. It has come to an end. Prophet Muhammad told us about that, alayhi salatu was salam, that the jizya can be taken until Prophet Isa alayhi salam returns. وَيَفِيضَ الْمَالُ حَتَّى لَا يَقْبَلَهُ أَحَدٍ and money will be widespread, the wealth will be widespread, such that nobody will be accepting it. Meaning there'd be nobody to give zakah to. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Thumma yamkuthu Isa alayhi salam. 
the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Isa Alaihi Salam will remain upon the earth. Fil Ardi Arba'ina Sana. He will remain on the earth for 40 years. Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inni la arju in talabi umrun. He said, I wish, I hope. This was before the Prophet ﷺ knew that he was going to die. He said, and I wish, I hope, that if my life is to be one that is long enough to see Isa alayhi salam and alqa Isa ibn Maryam, I would wish to see him. فَإِنْ عَجِلَ بِي مَوْتٌ But if I die before that, Prophet Muhammad said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, فَمَنْ لَقِيَهُ مِنْكُمْ فَلْيُقْرِئُهُ مِنِّ السَّلَامِ If I die before that, then he told his companions, whoever among you meets him, meets Isa alayhi salam, then give him my salam. So that is what we will do, inshaAllah, if we live to see Isa alayhi salam. We would say to him that our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he passed his salam onto you. And so Isa alayhi salam will say, wa alayhi salam, and upon him be peace. So remember that. Most of the signs, the small signs of the Day of Judgment, that are about 40, 41, 42. Most of them have occurred. There are a handful of them left, perhaps four or five of them left. They are the moving of mountains from their places that is yet to occur. The Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold that is yet to occur. Al-Mahdi will appear. This is a person, a pious person known as Muhammad, the son of Abdullah who will be again the Caliph of the Muslims. I, I, this is not the time to go into the details about him, but the allegiance will be paid to him near the Kaaba and so on. These are some of the things that are yet to happen. Then the first sign, the fir first major sign of the Day of Judgment will be that a Dajjal will appear. Al-Mahdi will have his army and he will set off towards Istanbul. He will set off towards Istanbul and he will conquer it without any fighting. No fighting will take place. You know Istanbul is mostly Muslim now. So no fighting will take place. No war will take place. Then as soon as that happens, people will get word that a Dajjal has appeared. And he's going round to the people. And this will actually be true. That a Dajjal will appear at that time. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said that Isa alayhi salam he will descend in Damascus. Damascus is the capital of Syria. So he will descend in Damascus. So where was he raised? Do you remember which place he was in when he was raised? He was in? It wasn't Nazareth, no. It wasn't Bethlehem either. You're getting closer though. Bethlehem, that's Bethlehem. <laughs> It was, no, you got further away there. You got cold. Uh, it was Jerusalem. He was in Beit al-Maqdis. That's where he was raised. And he will descend in Damascus. Damascus is not far away from Jerusalem. That's where he will descend. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the people, they will be with the Mahdi. The Mahdi will come. There will be perhaps six years 
that will pass. Al-Mahdi will come, the Muslims will pay allegiance to him, there will be a lot of war, there will be a lot of people who try to attack him, somebody out of Syria will come, al Sufyani, try, he will try to come with an army to attack him, but he will not be successful. An army will come from the east. Allah knows best who this army is. They will come to attack him also, but they will not succeed. And he will mobilize an army. Then Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam, hum yawma idhin qalil, wa julluhum bi baytil maqdis. The Muslims, they will be in Jerusalem. Al-Mahdi will be in Jerusalem. وَإِمَامُهُمْ رَجُلٌ صَالِحٌ Their imam, their leader, Al-Mahdi, will be a pious man. فَبَيْنَمَا إِمَامُهُمْ قَدْ تَقَدَّمَ يُصَلِّي بِهِمُ الصُّبُحُ And as their, as the Mahdi will be about to pray, lead the Fajr prayer. إِذْ نَزَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ الصُّبُحُ Isa alayhi salam will descend upon them. He will come to them at Fajr time. In another hadith, he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that while فَبَيْنَمَا هُمْ يَعِدُّونَ الْقِتَالِ لِلْقِتَالِ As the, the Muslims in Jerusalem, they're getting ready to fight. يُسَوُّونَ الصُّفُوفِ they will be uh, assembling the battle lines. They'll be assembling the army. You stand here, you stand on the left wing, on the right wing, in the middle, the archers, all these different things. The archers or the equivalent of archers. They will be assembling the Muslim lines. He said, Iza, or إِذْ أُقِيمَتِ الصَّلَاةِ Then the iqama will be called for the prayer. Because even when one is fighting in war, there's still the prayer has to be prayed. فَيَنْزِلُ عِيسَ بَنُ مَرْيَمْ Isa alayhi salam will descend. The Prophet in another hadith said, so we learn small things from all these different hadiths. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said that as, as they will be about to pray, إِذْ بَعَثَ اللَّهُ الْمَسِيحَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ Isa alayhi salam will have descended. فَيَنْزِلُ عِنْدَ الْمَنَارَةِ الْبَيْضَاءِ He will descend at the white minaret. شَرْقِيَ دمشق In the east of Damascus. وَاضِعًا كَفَّيْهِ عَلَىٰ أَجْنِحَةِ مَلَكَيْنِ He will have his hands, عليه السلام, resting on the wings of two angels and he will descend in the eastern part of Damascus. So you can cancel out the west, and the north, and the south. The eastern part of Damascus, you look at the map when you get a chance. The eastern part of Damascus, there will be a white minaret there. He will descend with his hands resting upon the wings of two angels. And he described him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it's as though pearls will be falling from his hair. This is a, an indication of his beauty. And then from there, from Damascus, he will make his way to Jerusalem. And there, they will be about to pray the Fajr prayer. Remember, he will descend and his age will be 33. He will live on this earth for 40 years. So what that tells us is that he will pass away, alayhi salam, when he is 73. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said that he will, when the people see him, this is Prophet Isa alayhi salam has descended. May Allah make us among the people that are there. When they see him, that he has descended, the Imam al-Mahdi, he will start to walk backwards so that Isa alayhi salam can lead the prayer. So then Prophet Isa alayhi salam will take his hand and he will put it between the, the shoulder blades, the shoulder blades of Al-Mahdi and say to him that the prayer was called for you. This is at first a sign that Isa alayhi salam will follow not the rules of the Injil that were revealed to him, but that he will be following the rules 
revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam because he is going to be praying behind one of the people from this nation from the nation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then after this after they've prayed Isa alayhi salam will ask for the doors to be open and there they will find a dajjal and his army yes i've missed a lot lots of bits out about what a dajjal will do and so on but we're speaking about Isa alayhi salam and behind him there will be 70,000 Jews in a narration it's mentioned that most of the followers of the Dajjal will be Jews and a lot of them will be the Jews the Jews of Iran look up today how many Jews live in Iran if I'm not mistaken the Jews of Asbahan Asfahan. So then there will be a lot of fighting. As soon as a Dajjal sees Prophet Isa alayhi salam, he will begin to run. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that every kafir that is that the uh, sweet, pleasant breath of Isa alayhi salam reaches in an extraordinary way they will die so this is like a one man army Prophet Isa alayhi salam when there will be 70,000 of those people in that army as, 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 as far as the pleasant breath of Isa the blessed breath of Isa alayhi salam extends to those people will die he will follow, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ad-Dajjal, all the way to Lud. Nowadays it's spelled L-O-D, Lud. It's inside occupied Palestine. There at the gate of Lud, in, in the past, remember cities, they used to have, uh, they looked like fortresses, they had walls and gates that had guards. So you couldn't enter just like that. You had to enter through one of the gates of the city. So at the gate of Lud, in the Babi Lud, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, Isa alayhi salam will kill a Dajjal. Prophet Isa alayhi salam will be the one to do away with the Jews. This is what the hadiths mention. This is what Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam said. Then after this, everybody will be a Muslim. Even those people that are Christians at his time, the Quran mentions that they will embrace Islam. And that everybody will be upon one religion. Al-Islam. And it will be a time of, of peace towards the end of the life of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. When a Dajjal is killed, Prophet Isa alayhi salam will be told that now Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has released a creation and they are human beings. That لا يدان لأحد بقتالهم Nobody is able to fight them. Even though the, the, um, these times will be about a lot of bloodshed. There will be a lot of war. But it will be, it will be uh, Isa alayhi salam will be informed that nobody is able to fight these people. There are too many in number and so on. This is Ya'juj and Ma'juj. When they come Prophet Isa alayhi salam will be instructed to take the Muslims to At-Tur, Tur Sayna, which is in Egypt. He will take them there and they will seek safe haven in those mountains. And in an extraordinary way, 
when they say, when the Muslims, they say, Subhanallah, then this will be filling for them. Allah creates whatever He wills. When they say, Subhanallah, even though there isn't much food there, when they say, Subhanallah, this will fill them. Usually we don't see a connection between the two. You say, La ilaha illallah, you don't feel that it, it fills your stomach. But in those times, this is what will happen. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will send upon Ya'juj and Ma'juj after they uh, cause havoc on the earth upon the disbelievers. The disbelievers at that time, this is before everybody becomes Muslim, the disbelievers at that time, they will uh, go into their cities. They will seek safe haven there. And they will want to protect themselves and take up arms and so on. But they will have that they will not be able to protect themselves against Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Then Allah Ta'ala will send an affliction upon Ya'juj and Ma'juj, something in their necks. Because of that, they will die. And they will cover the surface of the earth. Some people, they will encourage one of the Muslims, in Tur Sayna, with Isa alayhi salam, they will encourage him to go and check what's going on outside. When they hear some peace, they will say to him, go and check what is going on outside. So the hadith that the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said what means that he will, he will have his heart set to, I'm going out, this is my last, you know, this is, this is my last um, activity in this world. I'm going out, I'm going to die. This is what he thinks. He makes dua, he goes outside and he sees that they're all dead. And a stench fills the earth. He comes back and he tells Prophet Isa alayhi salam and the Muslims and so Prophet Isa alayhi salam, he makes dua that Allah rids the world of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So they are taken away. Allah ta'ala sends birds that take Ya'juj and Ma'juj away. Where are they taken? Allah knows best. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam did not mention that. But then what will happen is that everybody will become Muslim. Everybody will be a Muslim. Such that he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa turfa'u shahna'u wa tabaghud. Hate, having hate for another person, not liking another person, this will be lift, this will be dis this will disappear. This will be lifted, this will be gone. So there will be absolute peace on the earth. He mentioned Anything that had something harmful, any animal, any serpent even, that had uh, some poison or something harmful, that will be taken away. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, That even the young child then, at this time, where there will be peace all over the earth, even the young child, let's say the toddler, the newborn, if he was to put his hand inside the mouth of a snake, the snake wouldn't harm him. In the time of Isa alayhi salam. فَلَا تَضُرْ فَلَا تَضُرَّهُ وَتُفِرُّ الْوَلِيدَةُ الْأَسَدُ فَلَا يَضُرَّهَا And the young girl, the three or the four year old girl, she will chase away a lion because there'll be peace on the earth. وَيَكُونُ الذِّئْبُ فِي الْغَنَمِ كَأَنَّهُ كَلْبُهَا And the wolf will be in the flock as though it's the sheepdog. It will not be harmful. وَتُمْلَأُ الْأَرْضُ مِنَ السِّلْمِ كَمَا يُمْلَأُ الْإِنَاءُ مِنَ الْمَاءِ Look at this imagery. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the world will be full of peace and harmony, just as a glass, just as a container is full of water. 
like that the world will be full of peace, harmony, and tranquility. وَتَكُونُ الْكَلِمَةُ وَاحِدَةً And everybody will be Muslim. فَلَا يُعْبَدُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Only Allah will be worshipped. وَتَضَعُ الْحَرْبُ أَوْزَارَهَا There will be no war. He said, and the earth, it would give off its fruits, just like it would in the time of Adam alayhi salam. He said such that uh, grapes, a group of people, they would be satisfied. They would eat and be filled with a bunch of grapes. And that people, they would eat from pomegranates, and they'd be so big that people would sit inside them for their shade from the scorching sun. The earth will be with abundant blessings, and there will be peace. And then the Prophet ﷺ said that because there is no war, no one will ride a horse for war because there will be no need. The Prophet ﷺ said that Isa السلام, will come. He will intend to come to me in Al Madinah. He will take a path, follow a route to Al Madinah. And he will come to my grave and say, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulallah. And I will most definitely return the salam. Prophet Isa alayhi salam, he will live for 40 years on this earth when he returns. He will marry. He will have children. He will pass away and the Muslims, they will pray upon him. And even now, the Muslims have left a space in al Madina for Prophet Isa alayhi salam to be buried next to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. On the Day of Judgment, Prophet Isa alayhi salam will make clear to expose those people that worshipped him and said that he was the son of God. He will make clear that he did not order the people to worship him, neither him nor his mother. He will make this clear. And when he makes this clear, those people, if they could die, because there's no death after that, if they could die on the day of judgment, they would have died of shame and of fear of what is to come. Prophet Isa alayhi salam is still alive. He is in the sky. There are only a few things that remain that will happen and then Prophet Isa alayhi salam will come. One of the biggest signs of the coming of Al-Mahdi is that there will be mass injustice all over the world, not in one place, but all over the world. People two or three, four, five hundred years ago, they were saying that the earth that has become a very unjust place. And that was before uh, that was before World War One and World War Two and all these other things that are happening around the world, and all these stealing and all of the zina and all of the kufr that is occurring because Kufr is a type of injustice. The Prophet والسلام, said that the ten major signs of the Day of Judgment, the first of them is the coming of Ad Dajjal, and then Isa alayhi salam, and then Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and so on. That they are like a they are like beads on a string. So as soon as the string is cut. If you hold it up like that, if it's closed, 
and you, you cut it, as soon as you hold it up, what happens? One falls, and the second, and the third, and the... He said, like that. When the first one happens, when the Dajjal appears, the rest are going to happen in quick succession. In one of the books of the scholars, he said that what happens at the end of time, the day of judgment, the signs, and so on, these should be taught to every young Muslim. Why? So that we all have, so from a young age, we have an understanding of what the future holds. No matter what happens in your life, you get married, you pass your driving test, somebody passes away, you get a new job, whatever happens, your life is revolved around being a Muslim, learning the religious knowledge, uh, performing the good deeds, but you're also, you have this in the foreground that all these things are going to happen. And when they happen, then I need to be in a good state. It's, it's fantastic for a person to wonder, but when is Isa alayhi salam going to come exactly? The exact point? No human knows. Except that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam gave us these indications. But a person shouldn't do as uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam warned. He said one day, he said, Badiru bil a'mal, do the good deeds. Fix your situation now. Hal tantaziruna illa faqran munsiyan. Are you waiting for uh, poverty to strike you? Now, if you're able to do good things with your money, if you're able to do good things for your children Islamically, if you're able to donate, if you're able to, uh, and so on and so forth, if you're able to do good things with your money now, do it now, don't delay. He said, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting to be poor? Because when you're poor, that's it. The opportunity is gone. It slipped through your fingers. He said, O maradon mufsidan, are you waiting to become very ill? Even if it's uh, joint pains, toothache, when you get past 30, 35, 40, you start feeling it. If, you're, if you've got a healthy-ish body now, use it to obey Allah. Are you waiting to become ill and then, uh, then, then the opportunity, things that you could have done, they lost? Oh, mawtan mujhizan. Are you waiting for sudden death? He said, O Haraman Mufannidan, are you waiting to become old? So old that that's it. You know, uh, you can't do this. Like you look at people doing good deeds, praying, reciting Quran, attending gatherings of religious knowledge, uh, re reviewing, teaching others, but you feel like now you don't have the energy. And, you, and, you, and if regret could kill, yani, then it would kill. They would say, Subhanallah, you, you wasted all this time. He said, Is that what you're waiting for? He said, alayhi salatu was salam, awid dajjal fasharru ghaibin yuntadhar. Are you seriously saying in your mind, yani, are you saying, uh, you know, let a dajjal come, then I'll sort myself out. You're going to be worried about a lot of things when a dajjal comes. <laughs> a dajjal is someone, and we'll finish with this, a dajjal is a test. Imagine a family member who has passed away whether it's your mother, your father, your, your, your grandparents, a loved one who has passed away. So a Dajjal will pull at these emotional strings. A Dajjal, for one person, he will say to him, believe in me. He will say, no, 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 I don't believe in you. You're not God. So then he will get two shaitans. One of them will take the form of his dead mother, of that person's dead mother. It's not really going to be his dead mother, but the form, of his, you know, she, she, he will take, this uh, shaitan will take the form of his mother and have the voice of his mother. And the other shaitan, the other devil will take the form of the man's father and have the voice of the father and say, Oh son, son, believe in him. Believe in him. I, I plead with you, believe in him. He plays at people's emotional strings. If a person is not prepared 
emotionally, if they're not in a good religious state, then things are going to be very, very tough. Allah is the one that changes the hearts. A person might think, nope, I know about Ad-Dajjal, I'm ready. A person shouldn't be complacent. A person shouldn't be complacent. Until they reach paradise, yeah, then relax. Before that, no, no. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to see Prophet Isa alayhi salam. We ask Allah to make us among his supporters. We ask Allah to grant us the ability to convey the salam of our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. I will finish if anybody has a uh, question about anything that I mentioned or didn't then you're free to uh, ask. And if you don't ask, maybe I'll ask a few questions. Does anybody have a question? Yes? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, Laylatul Qadr, when the Qur'an was revealed, it was not the 27th actually. Laylatul Qadr, when the Qur'an was revealed, was actually the 24th of Ramadan. So Laylatul Qadr, when the Qur'an uh, came down from al al Mahfuz, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, mentioned, Allah revealed, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. That it came down in laylatul qadr. And in a hadith, the Prophet mentioned, alayhi salatu was salam, that it was, that, that, that night was the 24th. Yeah? So the scholars, a lot of the scholars said, well, you know what? Laylatul qadr doesn't have to be on the 27th. Although a lot of scholars, a lot of the, the, the Sunni scholars said it's the 27th. Uh, Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu anhu, Sayyiduna Aisha radiyallahu anha, they both said it's always on the 27th. But a lot of the scholars said, no, it doesn't have to be. And they used this as a proof that the Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, that the Quran was revealed, so it came down from Allah al Mahfuz on the 24th of Ramadan, and that night was, as Allah revealed, inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Like that, Al Injil was also revealed on Laylatul Qadr, but the Prophet said it was the 18th of Ramadan. But in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Laylatul Qadr, uh, it can be, it can actually be on any night of Ramadan, but it's most likely to be in the last 10. And then he said it's most likely to be in the last 7. And then it's even more likely that it's on one of the odd nights, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29. But it could be on the 22nd. It's part of the last 10. But it's just more likely that it's on the last 7. Uh, but we all know that, 20, that the 27th is always a special night. You know, always, subhanAllah. Uh, but yeah, so it doesn't have to be on the uh, 27th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else? No. Ma sha Allah. Let's say La ilaha illallah and as salah ala nabi three times. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Barakallahu bikum.